Here's our second time video, and this one is checking the switch time on an oxygen sensor. In order to check an oxygen sensor correctly, we need to know exactly how quickly it can switch between around 175 millivolts or less all the way up to 800 millivolts. As we all should know, a low voltage from an oxygen sensor signifies a lean mixture and a high voltage a rich mixture. It's very important for an oxygen sensor to be able to switch quickly because if it can't, the catalytic converter will not work. So let's uh, look at the replay I have here and we can see it's a pretty active sensor. This car is running at about 2000 RPM. Uh, I had just started it four or five minutes ago and it was cold and I've had it run in so I could get make sure that my pattern was looking good and it's critical to have a very good connection on an oxygen sensor because the signal is not very strong so a bad connection can bring all kinds of interference when you try to get a good picture of it this is actually a very good picture and you'll find working on vehicles that sometimes you have to work pretty hard to get a good picture especially if you're starting to get interference with from different things like electromagnetic fields that are pulsing around where you're trying to get a pattern and then you can play around with different kinds of frequency rejects which helps change the bandwidths that the scope is going to look at we'll discuss all that on the second night of the class when we start uh, using all the lab scopes hands-on in the classroom so the scope has what they call a buffer in it and what that is is a recording device that records everything that you're doing with it for a short period of time it's an automatic buffer on this scope so all I have to do is when I press the hold button is it stops the screen where it is and it'll have that buffer which is like a movie that it made in its memory so then I can go ahead and play back through that buffer and look at the pattern closely and then use the cursors to measure so I'm here and I'm going to hit the replay button on the scope and we can see the different ways we can move it around we'll cover all this when we get into the second night and we can see it's on screen minus zero five which is pretty close to the end of what I was doing so what I did is after I know that this car is warmed up the oxygen sensor is switching well and there's not the cars demonstrating closed loop ability then it's time to check it so what I do is I drop the throttle down and let it idle for a second and then I started snapping the throttle and you can see in this last buffer here's the first snap of the throttle I did then here's the second one and then here's the third one and what that does is when you snap the throttle the vehicle the computer will automatically compensate because it sees the throttle opening and it's going to fully enrich the mixture and so you're going to get that nice switch from lean to rich and then when you let go of the throttle you can see that it shuts the fuel off right away and then it goes from rich to lean very quickly also but we're, mo we're mostly concerned just about the switch time between lean and rich this switch time has to be underneath a hundred milliseconds and it's the switch time between 175 millivolts and 800 millivolts I can pretty much tell that this one is switching very quickly as the time it took to do it which is our horizontal was a very short period it's almost a straight line going up the scope when you see a slow oxygen sensor and you do this snap you'll see more of a slower curve up to the top and a slower curve down to the bottom and usually when you have a bad oxygen sensor you won't be having patterns that look like this you'll be seeing more of a slower switch rate because the oxygen sensor does not respond but we need to know the exact time measurement so we can write that on a repair order make everybody happy 
and I'll go back to where I snapped the throttle. We'll turn on the cursors and we'll make the measurements. I'm not going to explain too much about how to use the cursors now. We'll explain all how to do that on our second night. So I'm going to turn on the cursor function. And what the cursors can do also is measure a difference in voltage between the cursors. At this point, what we want to do is try to get our first cursor. We know that we're at 200 millivolts per division and right about where the bottom of the switch was is real close to 175 200 millivolts so we're going to get that first cursor moved over and you can see it sliding over and that looks pretty close maybe about right there and then I'm going to change the the cursor over to the other side and start moving that one over so we can see and we can see right up here we have on our screen it's showing us the difference in voltage between the cursors and it's showing how much time is between the cursors so let's get this over here to where well that's uh, pretty close we'll put it right about right there and I still think we're a little bit right now we have 792 millivolts between the cursors let's move the other one over one notch so now we have 820 millivolts between the cursors we're right on that line and here's the replica of that line on this next snap throttle I did and then we can see the time. It's 40 milliseconds between the cursors and an 820 millivolt difference between the cursors. So we've got it set like perfect. This uh, O2 sensor switched incredibly fast. Uh, and measuring down to like 40 milliseconds is uh, as close as we need to get to check this. The cursor function is very important to use to determine the oxygen sensor's ability to switch. There is no other tool you can use but a DSO. You, can, you can't use a scan tool. The sample rate is way too slow. A uh, scan tool can come in handy to find out if where you can graph an O2 sensor over a period of time and maybe see the vehicle running lean but you're never going to see this switch time as it's described here on the on our fluke scope here if we switch the cursors which we do here we can get an idea of what the voltages are too but that'll come in later videos also but we're on the top cursor there so we'll bring it down to the highest reading which is right there and then our bottom cursor will bring it down to zero so we'll switch it to our bottom one so we can see that when we snap the throttle there we recorded a almost a full volt out of the sensor which is a substantial amount it's also very nice to have the cursors to see the amplitude in other words how much voltage the oxygen sensor can produce we're gonna see how low it went to so I'm gonna switch the cursors one more time and bring the top one down and we'll see what that lowest reading is right there and we're down to about a hundred and twenty eight millivolts so we're pretty guaranteed that this oxygen sensor can see rich, it can see lean, and that its switch time far exceeds what it needs to be. We'll come back with some more videos on measuring voltage. And I know you can't wait.